Hello, my name is Joshua, and this is the Tusketeers channel where we will be reviewing, according to the script, geeky stuff. Okay. Anyways, today we will be reviewing Amphibia. Once upon a time in Pacland, in a dark night, a local heads back home only to find a horrifying creature that he describes as such. Oh, it was horrifying! It had a, a huge head, a weird stubby bump right in the middle of its face, and long spindly legs! <laughs> Here, we are introduced to the plantar family, Hop Pop, Polly, and Spring. Spring feels bad about not being responsible enough, so to prove himself, he decides to hunt a dangerous beast that could kill him. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's responsible. Deep in the wood, Sprig finds the creature, who reveals to not really be bad at all. As it turns out, there is a real monster lurking. <laughs> the creature saves Sprig, and then we get this beautiful way to start a new friendship. <gasps> you... you saved me. You're not a beast at all. You're a hero. An ugly, ugly, ugly hero. You got a friend in me. This was not my idea, I swear. Blame the editor, not me. It was Joy. Kill him. <laughs> now, when I say kill, you say it. Kill. It. Kill. It. The creature is revealed to be a human named Anne, who was isekai into this world and is now lost. Sprig then decides to do actually something responsible for once. And he and his family decide to take care of Anne, which slowly leads them into growing closer to each other. Oh, I love the found family true! Soon enough, it is revealed that Anne came to this world using a magic box. And she's not alone, for two of her friends are also trapped in Amphibia. Take a look at this, please, Sasha. It was found far from here in the South Forest. Now we know that you've been lying to us. Now we know that there are more of you. From here on, the show is about growth, friendship, and a dark cloud that is rising in the horizon. The show was created by Matthew Benjakarn. Benjakarn. I'm sure hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I'm not, I'm so sorry. Ben Chikarn. Who previously had worked as a storyboard artist and director for episodes of Gravity Falls. One of them being one of my favorites, Norwest Mansion Noir, or Norware Mansion Mystery, depending on the version of the episode. Which, according to my very professional and reliable sources, won him an Annie Award. He also worked on Big City Greens, which was actually a very good show. And during that time, he came up with Amphibia, inspired by a childhood trip to Bangkok, Thailand, where he felt as an outsider, but as time went on, he grew to love the place and he didn't want it to live. Video games also inspired the show, like Zelda and Chrono Trigger. I can see the Zelda aspect that inspired the show, like uh, in season three, without getting to spoilers, there are these three temples, and each one represents a different aspect, like wisdom, power, and heroism, which is basically just courage. And um, there's also the frog designs, which look a lot like this one, and Robo and Frobo. There are actually a lot of video game references in this show. And Boon Choi is the protagonist. She's brave, independent, kind of self-centered and irresponsible, over-competitive and immature, which works perfect for the show. Usually having a character with bad personality traits is seen as bad. But in Anne's case, it works for the show. Her journey is about improvement, about learning to rely on others, be a team player, to stand up for herself, to forget about what other things about her and start thinking about others. She's not perfect and that's okay. That's what makes her real, her flaws. You can see through the show how she slowly progresses as a character and her friendship with Spring lets her see how toxic her previous friendships were. She didn't know any better. Anne, this isn't cute anymore. We are meeting up with Marcy right now. End of discussion. 
I guess it's okay if I'm a little late. Boom! I knew you'd change your mind. Brick is very energetic, a risk taker, courageous, adventurous, and very, very responsible. Which is probably the reason why he's always the one to get targeted by, well, anything and everything. Why me? Ow! Why always me? His dangerous personality and dark sense of humor seems to be the main reason why he can't make any friends. Didn't you have friends before I showed up? Uh... <laughs> Your turn. Guys, 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 check this out. Ah! 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 No, it's eating me alive. Ah! <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Kids around here don't really get me. Well, hey, they are missing out. Unless we count Ivy, who is... Oh no, it's an ambush! <laughs> Just like him. Pop Pop is the classic grandpa who is always going on about the old times. I wouldn't say he's as funny as Brick, but he can definitely get a laugh out of you from time to time. He also has more depth, being an only parent and trying to keep the family together no matter how hard life has hit them. It makes you understand more why life before is so appealing to him. Polly, she's just... She's just hilarious. Seeing a little baby suddenly say something like this. Just give me an excuse to use old Doris here. I think the little one wants to kill me. Yep. It's the best. She's also a flipping Pokemon who can use very good moves. Polly, use Hyper Boys. <laughs> Polly, use Hydro Pump. Polly, use ball tackle. Polly, use flamethrower. <laughs> she will be a very good asset for your competitive team. She's not a deep character, but well, she's just a tadpole, so uh, what do you expect? Such a way, right? She is both menacing and funny, a total badass. This is how you make a likable jerk. Sasha is manipulative and she always needs to be in control of her relationships. Reason why her relationship with Anne was so toxic. She's also a freaking rock star. <laughs> Marcy Wu, she's just a lovable geek. The greatest JRPG of all time. Have you played it? Do you want to play it? Do you want to borrow it? Just say the word and I'll lend you my copy. Man, it'll change your lives! The show treats her art as an important moment, so I won't spoil it for you. All secondary characters are amazing. If Amphibia nails something, is memorable character. Like Logo. Do you have one we could buy? Of course I do! I don't. Why do you keep doing that? Old smithing accident. You don't want to know. Uh, okay, so... Tripped on an anvil. Landed neck first on a metal pipe. Pierced my voice box clean through. Dude, come on. Cool. Miss Croker. Okay, bye, Mrs. Croker. Thank you. Bye, darling. Next time, try to keep that road rage in check. <laughs> 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 Pretty sure I just got played. That woman is everything I want to be. And Mayor Toadstool. We better catch this beast before it hurts somebody. Because for Mayor Toadstool, your safety comes first. Oh, it's a responsible thing to do. <laughs> or Maddie, one of my favorite characters. If you want the dough, the boy has to marry my daughter. Hi, Spring. Ain't she adorable? Done. Or the best character ever, Shuck. 
That's Chuck, by the way. I grow tulips. Good to know. That's Chuck. I grow tulips. I grow tulips. I grow tulips. I grow tulips. Yes, he does. He grows tulips. Best frog. I love the art style. It's very colorful and vivid, but also dark and terrifying, which is how the world makes you feel. There is beauty in nature, but also so much danger. There are a lot of fun, cool, and horrifying monster designs that populate this world and make you feel like they can pop up anywhere. And they can. It's a world you like to live in and a world you hate to live in. As a good fantasy should, there is history to Amphibia, a forgotten dark past. There are politics, which I'll say separating the three girls into the main three races was very clever. Where we have Anne, the character that needs to learn to stand up for herself with the lowest race, which are the frogs, the worker class, who need to learn to stand up to the toads who rule over them. And then we have Sasha, who likes control and ends up with the toads, who are a war-driven race that rule over the frogs and want full control of Amphibia. And then we have Marcy, who is the intellectual of the group and ended up with the newts, who rule over the valley as the superior race with their vast knowledge and technology. We have a struggle where the frogs are abused and are getting tired of being bullied by the toads. The toads want control over the newts because they feel like they should be the ones in charge. And it's actually very interesting. There is lore to this world, traditions, alchemy, even a soft magic system that uses components and incantations to simulate complex unwritten rules. Those unwritten rules! If you like fantasy, you will definitely enjoy it. Comedy, as any other art form, is very subjective. Not all jokes in Amphibia are amazing, but I'm older, so some jokes that are for kids don't really work for me. Um, there are a lot of game references and anime references. I can say I like the references, but there are so common plays in today's shows that I'm like, oh cool, I remember that, or that show. It's nice, but the moment passes fast. What I personally like about Amphibia is the dark humor. I really like dark humor, especially in kids' shows, because it's so funny and sometimes it's so out of place. And Amphibia is just filled with it. They are obsessed with death. We'll never get Anne home if we get bitten to death by a venomous snake fly, or eaten to death by a camouflage sod skink, or crushed to death by a sand liger. Okay, okay, okay. Enough death already. Sheesh. I'm beginning to think you guys are obsessed. In the end, Amphibia is a very good show. I really recommend it. I would like to go more in depth about the show, but this is like an over review of it. And even that ended up being way too much. I was gonna talk more about the characters and more characters, but it was too much. It was a simple video. I needed to start cutting stuff because I like the show a lot and I think about it as it happens. Uh, but if you would like me to make a more in depth video, let me know in the comments. Uh, I would also like to talk about the Owl House, which is it's contemporary. If you would like me to talk about the Owl House, also say in the comments below. But if there's any show you would like us to talk about or movie, let us know in the comments. I won't promise that we will make it immediately because it takes time. But and we are and, and we already have a list of things we're going to talk about. But we'll put it on a list and we'll eventually, most likely, actually do it. Huh. There's something going on here? Uh, oh well.